Hi, my name's Philip Trendle and I work for the State Department of Agriculture, Fisheries and Forestry. Today we're just going to look at some of the design features of a constructed wetland used in an urban environment at a new development here in the Mackay region. We'll hopefully be able to show you some of the important characteristics that make the wetland work and also some of the things that if you don't do good maintenance and other activities that you won't get the result you need. So let's go take a look at the wetland. Here is an aerial view of the constructed wetland next to the urban development. It has been designed to have an inlet zone or sediment basin at the start. This has an inflow pipe to allow water to flow into the main wetland, which consists of deep pools and a macrophyte zone. It can also be bypassed during high flow events. The first feature of the constructed wetland is the inlet drains. These can be hardened surfaces to handle the high flow events and direct water to the main structures downstream. They can also be vegetated with native trees and plants to help control weeds growing in them. The sediment basin is a deepened section that the drains flow into. This is where heavy sediments can drop out and flow events trapped and transferred into the wetland zone via an inlet pipe. This inlet pipe allows water to pass between the structures at a greatly reduced velocity. To help with maintenance, a hardened area next to the structure can allow easier access to clean it out when required. This is important so that the deeper section can be maintained to function properly and allow enough volume to push water through the inlet pipe into the wetland. The main wetland zone is where most of the activity takes place to achieve water quality improvements. The water enters the wetland at a deeper section. There are normally two of these deeper sections within the structure and they are important refuge and habitat for small fish and other macroinvertebrates to help control pests like mosquitoes. The majority of the wetland is made up of the macrophyte zone. This should cover around 80% of the surface area and is a shallow section around 60 to 120 centimetres deep. This allows sedges, rushes and reeds to grow, which attract the biofilms that help break down any pollutants like nutrients or chemicals. Water needs to flow through here evenly before passing out through culverts or other outlets like a riser that control water levels. Planting up the edge of the wetlands with native riparian vegetation can help control weeds and other pests and keep them out of the structure. They also provide extra habitat for native wildlife that utilise the area. An important feature of a functioning constructed wetland is the high flow bypass. This is designed to allow major flow events to bypass the main wetland so that the macrophyte zone isn't ripped out and channels formed. It then joins back up where the main outflow from the wetland is. This is a key feature in maintaining the wetland's function and needs to be included when building structures in all situations. They also need to be kept clear of any sediment or vegetative growth that can build up over time. Hopefully this has increased your knowledge about designing wetlands to achieve water quality improvements you are targeting. They are part of the solution, but not the only one to improve water flowing into the Great Barrier Reef Lagoon. For more information, contact DAF or your local NRM or Landcare group.